In this video, I show how to create a stylized pillar in a modular way which allows for the creation of different variants of the same model. Follow along and find out how to make a model such as this one. For this video, I decided to start the model by using ZBrush and create the high poly model first. Keep in mind that you can use the opposite workflow of creating the low poly first in something like Maya or Blender and then sculpt the details afterwards. The reason I decided to start with ZBrush is because I was not following a specific concept and did not know yet how much I wanted to add to the model. This will also be a relatively simple and geometric model which makes the process of making the low poly version simple even though I started with the high poly. In ZBrush, what I did was to create the main shapes by using one of the default scenes and appending shapes to it. You can easily add geometric shapes to a scene by using the append menu. After I had all the pieces I wanted in the scene I started to sculpt using mostly the trim dynamic brush which is very useful for adding damage and bevel detail to the edges of a model. For some sections I also sculpted the model while having symmetry enabled. This allows to add details faster. After adding details I disabled symmetry and continued to work on the model looking for ways to break up the symmetric details. Another brush I found very useful while sculpting this was the clay brush. I used it in a similar fashion as the trim dynamic brush by adding damage to the edges of the model though with this brush such damage becomes more noticeable. I also used another brush which is the Orb Cracks 2 in order to add cracks to the surface of the model. This particular brush which comes with the Orb Brush Pack can be found online by doing a Google search. For the middle section, I wanted this portion of the model to be used to visually break up the straight cylinders and add more visual interest to the model. For this, I decided to make it look like a set of bricks put together. One thing I like to do when sculpting bricks is to make sure they don't look too uniform and straight. I always like to give them a little bit of roundness and edge damage. I used another of the orb brushes to add details to the surface of the shapes and then on top of that I used the trim dynamic to break up those details even more. Once I was done with the sculpting, I renamed all the pieces with the suffix underscore high. I used a plugin for this, but you could also just do this part manually. I exported the high poly model. I saved the ZBrush file as a new file and renamed the models with the suffix underscore low. For this, I also used Decimation Master to create a low poly model. I set the low poly decimation to be somewhat low poly while still maintaining the original silhouette. Once I had the low poly models, I exported them and imported into Maya. In Maya, I created the UVs for each piece. I typically placed my UV cuts in areas where they will not be too noticeable, and also in spots where there is a near 90 degree change in the angle of the geometry. Once I was done with the UVs, I duplicated some parts of the model in order to create a few different variants for it. This is a great way to reuse different pieces within a model and create many different variations while using the exact same pieces. For the duplicated meshes, I also offset the UVs by 1 and exported this as my new low poly model. In Substance Painter, I loaded the low poly and also the high poly through the bake settings. I set the bake settings to bake using the option of by mesh name. I did this for every map, including the ambient occlusion, as the ambient occlusion did not look the way I wanted it without setting this option. For the texture, I used the 3DX stylized smart material for which there is a link to in the video description. I proceeded to change the colors of the model to be a more gray and somewhat neutral color. I increased the roughness amount to make it look a bit shinier. I also added a new layer which had a dirt cavities mask on it, inverted that and used it to add a bit more color variation to the surface of the model. So this is how I created this particular stylized model. The final render was done through Marmoset Toolback. If you have any questions about anything that was shown in this video, please feel free to add it to the comments section. Also, if you like this video and how I made the model with modular pieces, 
You may be interested in checking out this other video about creating a stylized modular fence in a completely modular fashion.